Hey Ubers, I'm going to share with you today a pair of tags I made for a pair of twins, Cadence and Winston, that just turned one year old. Um, they are so adorable and I wanted to make them a very special gift. We picked up um, four or five board books, the most adorable things. Um, that were recommended from a book by Anita Sylvie called A Hundred Best Books for Children. So if any of you guys are going to be having kids, this covers books from um, infancy to, I think, preteen. So uh, we got some real winners with that. Um, the pair of tags uses this Hampton Art um, Art Warehouse clear stamp set. I just want to show you guys all the stamps that are included. Quite a, quite a few. My favorites include that um, heart cloud stamp. The fonts are very cute because they've got um, miniature, my, almost microscopic little hearts embedded in the font. Those heart blooms could be used for so many different occasions. Um, but I, r right now, I'm very into clouds. <laughs> I'm very into hot air balloons. Um, this, this stamp set is SC0040. Who loves you? So shop around, and if your um, pro provider um, or your local scrapbooking shop doesn't carry it, ask for it because uh, it's just great. I really love it. Um, and you'll see it pop up in a couple of my projects. Um, one that just posted on Hampton Art, um, The Biggest Surprise, um, a two-page layout that I'd love for you to go check out, um, also uses that stamp set. Here's another stamp set that's going to be used for the tags. It's Hampton Art and Colette Hall is the designer. Uh, as you can see, some of these stamps have some grunge potential, uh, but you'll see in this pair of tags it is absolutely not grunge. And the code for this stamp set is SC0218 clock. And I've used those wings quite a bit for cards and various other projects, and I'm seeing some of the designers on my Hampton Art team also using those stamps in varied ways, which is just so fun to see how everyone's different sensibilities go into their projects. I'm using DCWV papers today. This is uh, Preppy Princess, so that's what I used to make this card, uh, the tag for the feet for the little girl, Cadence. And I just love um, the variety of patterned papers that you get in this stack. And I didn't want to cover them up um, with uh, colored stamping. So I have some techniques today. Um, you might have used them in the past. This will just sort of jolt your memory as an option that you can use when you want to showcase your stamps. And you also want to showcase the paper underneath. For the little boys tag, I use Nana's Nursery. And the nice thing about um, this size of paper is it actually is just large enough to cut out tags from um, my current favorite tag die, the Sizzix um, Tag and Book Plates die. That size is proving to be um, perfect for me. So you'll probably see more projects from me using that die. I'm also using uh, the Sizzix Mini Hearts die. Uh, I love these these particular dies along, I think these are like in the movers and shapers range, but they're also big dies because they cut through some rather uh, thick materials as well as cardstock. So, as you can see, there's a um, Dove soapbox. This is about a cereal weight chipboard, 
and I'm trying to do my part as a crafter to be environmental so I do save a lot of my packaging um, and I'm using this with a piece of cardstock that I'll cut from the same die. I'm going to glue those together to uh, add a subtle um, depth and texture to this project. One of my goals with these tags was to incorporate depth and texture in really subtle ways so that the final project is not really thick um, but has a nice finished feeling. So these tags took a little bit of time. There's a little bit of fussy cutting but I'm hoping uh, the final results um, pleased the mama enough that she'll hang on to them for, for safekeeping. So um, while I do a bit of die cutting, I just want to apologize to the U, my Uber family. Um, I've been absent for a little while, but it doesn't mean I have been crafty. I've been um, uh, working on my blog quite a bit, actually. So if you're interested, come visit me. It's contadinak.wordpress.com. And here I'm just adhering the two pieces together. Um, and I've also had, I don't know if you're like this, but I've had a little bit of intimidation about um, this awesome new camera my guy got for me. Um, this is the last video I'll be making with the old camera. The new camera is HD, so hopefully um, you guys will see a little bit more sophistication in the production of these videos. Um, and I've also had a couple of major life changing things going on outside of my crafty life. So um, I'll try to share those with you guys as we go along. But I'm just going to focus on the tags today because this is actually uh, a video that's going to be linked to uh, my Hampton Art blog post for Tags for Twins. So um, I uh, stamped these on the very edge of that little piece of pattern paper so I can use the scraps for something else. And I sped it up a little bit, but um, I needed to do, to do a bit of fussy cutting to get these wings just right. I've noticed some other crafters say that you should keep your scissors stationary and just move the paper. That doesn't seem to work for me. I tend to do a combination of the two. Um, I've used these um, little Martha Stewart scissors since I started crafting, actually, and they held up really well. I was also in San Jose recently, which is where um, we'll be moving shortly from Las Vegas. We've had a great year here. Um, I went to visit my new LSS. Uh, scrapbook Island, and um, I also did a DT crop and a workshop there, which is just really fun to interact with other crafters in a non-virtual, actual, physical, real way. Um, but, uh, oh, I forgot to bring some of my supplies with me, and I had been eyeing some uh, Fisker's shears. They're really tiny um, and they've got some spring to them, uh, so uh, those actually have worked really nicely for me, and um, I'll introduce them to you in in a an upcoming video. So um, I used some distress dye on most of the pieces that I cut out, just a little bit along the edges um, to make them pop off the page, just just a little bit more. And um, I also used my sanding block to um, get rid of any possible rough edges from especially the pieces that I fussy cut. So here's a piece of paper with a lot of text. Um, I'm seeing text just pop up all over the place um, in uh, the paper crafting world. Um, this is actually a rather old stack, um, but I'm, it's still being sold at Joann's and Michael's, I believe. Um, and I really didn't want to hide the cute lettering, um, but I also wanted to add a little bit of extra textural punch 
So what I did was um, stamp my clouds. These were the striped clouds um, with some watermark ink. Recently I've been using um, Clear Snaps Top Boss watermark ink and that's been serving me just fine. Um, and I also sprinkled with some clear fine, clear fine embossing powder. Uh, I, I prefer to work with the fine grain of embossing powder because it captures all the little details of um, the more detailed stamps that I have. And by using the clear fine, um, you're able to create some texture. Here my heat tool is just on it. Create some interesting, subtle textures without hiding the beautiful papers beneath. So um, if this is a technique you're already familiar with, well, and this is jolt your memory a little bit as uh, a little reminder that it's something you can use, because sometimes we forget about the, the techniques that we've got under our belt. And if you're a brand new crafter, I'm just really excited about um, the possibilities with this very simple technique. So those clouds will be fussy cut and I'm not going to show you that. I also used the small outline of a cloud stamp um, that's included in the same set um, to cut some clouds on the diagonal here. Um, when I'm interested in creating more movement in a project, I try to turn those horizontal and vertical lines on the diagonal. So my gingham check also, uh, the heart clouds with the gingham check on the little girls tag are also cut on the diagonal. And I think it does definitely um, work in terms of adding movement to your project, whatever the style. Um, so I did that here with the green checks and the hard cloud stamp. And if you remember, uh, if you can use like um, an anti-static um, device on that before you do your embossing, you can save yourself the trouble of having to wipe off little extra flecks of embossing powder. Um, so they have tools like that. They're like little pillows with some powder that you can get at your craft store. You can also, if you don't have that, use just um, a dryer sheet that you use for the laundry. Um, if by chance a little bit of embossing powder gets where you don't want it, you can take a small paintbrush and just tap, wipe off with the, the tip of the brush any little um, bits of powder that you don't want. So here you see one of my all-time favorite combos, craft cardstock and white pigment ink. Um, we just had Christmas in July at Hampton Art, so if you want to go visit the blog and see all their Christmas projects, start to get inspired for your Christmas card making, um, you can see um, my project, one of my projects. Um, I used Craft, a craft card stock base and a really graphic reindeer stamp. Just stamped that thing across my card front and um, applied a few select beautiful gems and wrapped a little bit of jute on top. I was really pleased with the results. It was a non-traditional Christmas card with a lot of, with a very ethereal feeling to it. Um, and, you know, the thinking of the card was, took me quite some time. But for, you know, just any crafter who wants a quick card, that's a 10-minute card. Um, just love that combination. So here I'm taking a cosmetic sponge and uh, a green-colored Distress ink and just getting into those um, little heart spaces. So the embossing acted as a resist. And when I applied the Distress ink, those tiny little hearts popped in, in such a cute way. <laughs> um, So now we've got like a, a nice stiff heart and I'm applying some glossy accents. I just use the tip to spread it out um, across that heart shape. Sometimes what happens is you get little bubbles 
Um, those don't bother me, but if they bother you, uh, you can um, pop them with a little needle um, before, right away, before any of the um, epoxy dries. So I, I fast forwarded and that was dried um, over a, a significant period of time. I will just do that and then go have dinner or have a meal or do something and then come back so that I don't end up messing it up with my fingerprints because you do need to give that time to dry. While um, you just watch me assemble the card, um, or the tag, sorry, um, you just need to use your designer's eye to decide where you want to place your pieces. I've been thinking a lot recently about style, um, about developing one's own style. Um, I read an interview recently on a website that's been a great resource to me, designteamcalls.com. Um, if you're a crafter, there, in addition to design team call listings, um, there's just an abundance of advice. They have um, a new feature uh, where they have a monthly guest advisor. This month, it's Jana Werner, and um, she's really quite available to advise on things like project critiques, um, blog critiques, basic questions, even for newbie crafters. N no question is too simple, um, and there's she responds in detail, and it's very, very helpful. I'm so glad that I have this very, very affordable membership on that site. Um, but I was talking about style, and there's an interview um, with one of the big wigs in the industry about developing one's own style. And definitely, I think that's very important um, to continue working on. Um, I think my style will always be evolving, actually. Um, but you know, as a designer for a manufacturer, I think it's a great challenge when you receive product to showcase that product to the best of your ability, even if it doesn't match your signature style. Um, and I think in doing that on a regular basis, even if you don't work for a manufacturer, you take a stamp set and you just use it in every possible way you can think of, or a tool, use it, just you know, step, step outside the box. I think that really helps um, you tone your crafty muscles um, and helps you develop an appreciation for things that you don't normally do. Um, for styles in which you don't normally work. Um, so anyway, here's um, that little heart-shaped piece. Um, I love my glue dots. They really save my fingertips from losing their prints with hot glue. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, if you stop by my blog, you can see a couple of projects that I've done um, using the glue dots a lot. But here I just wanted to create um, a, a tertiary level in my tag. Um, you know, you've got that flat level with just the glue, and then you've got the level with the pop dots, which is significantly higher. Here, if you just um, knead those pop dots a little bit, uh, you can create a level that's sort of intermediate in between those two. Um, and it's just an option, you know, if if you're playing with depth, um, it's an option. And I'm just wiping off my fingerprints. When I turn it to the side, you can sort of see the difference in levels there. I had um, a strip of a trio of pearls on the girls tag, so I decided to do the same thing on the boys tag. And I think it's totally your own preference. Um, I wanted this project to be really cute, but also really clean. So um, I cut off those the, the little tips of the clouds that extended past the edge. And then just finished that off with a little bit more distress. Um, I was so happy. This is Celebrated Basic Narrows. It's a sort of chartreuse um, sat satin ribbon that I believe I got at Michael's. And it ended up 
um, coordinating really nicely with the green elements on the boys tag. So um, I was really happy about that. And um, for the girls tag, I used a really sheer, shimmery, uh, light pink organza. And I believe it's the same company. So that's your finished tag. I think I mentioned this earlier on in the video. Um, if you're more of a written word type of crafter, um, I have a written tutorial that will appear on the Hampton Art blog August 8th of 2012. And you can see a stepped out tutorial of how I made the girls tag. Um, before I sign off, I just want to encourage all the my wonderful Uber followers to step outside your crafty comfort zone. If you're a CAS type of crafter, do something grungy and vice versa. Um, and try to think about the um, potential of the tools that you have. Um, I got a lot of use out of several sets that I got in my first quarter. Um, and I'm really, really happy about that. I will provide links to the various sites that I mentioned throughout the video. And um, I think the next video, I'm just going to be trying out the new camera. So um, it's, I think I'm going to do a little share and show you guys what I've been making because I've got quite a bit of project material that I can share with you and hopefully inspire you a little bit. Um, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I'd love to have you, Contadina K, and go on over and visit me at my blog, contadinak.wordpress.com. See you guys next time. Bye.